Breath of the Wild seems to have been Nintendo's soft reboot for The Legend of Zelda series. The game removed most of the traditional aspects that we had known about the series prior and gave it new life. Link was no longer the iconic character dressed in green, but now a hero clothed in blue. Before, Link would need a fixed set of core items for each dungeon and area, and without these particular items, Link would never progress forward. This was all changed with Breath of the Wild. Instead of continuously collecting new items in each area to solve its mystery, this concept was replaced in its entirety by obtaining a set item that held all the tools needed at the beginning of the game to solve every conundrum you encountered while playing. This new concept gave the player a multitude of ways to solve each puzzle, rather than restricting it to one definitive solution. And because of these changes, Breath of the Wild felt like a breath of fresh air as it focused on the player's experience, allowing you to choose what to do and where to go throughout your adventure, rather than the carefully structured path that you were limited to before. With these many changes in the gameplay, so was the story and its intricate timeline reinvented. This made prior Zelda games akin to ancient legends, as Breath of the Wild took place eons after preceding Zelda games. Breath of the Wild invented a new origin story to Hyrule and its foundation, and it seems rather obvious that Nintendo wanted to distance Breath of the Wild from its original timeline, granting it a fresh new perspective and a new take on overall progression. And it makes sense why Nintendo decided to reset the series' history with a new timeline that is no longer connected to its previous ones. The story in the former Zelda games is haphazardly incoherent, branching into three different timelines with many inconsistencies and minor plot holes strewn throughout the games. It felt like Nintendo only made the official timeline to please its fanbase who wouldn't stop asking for it. And for that reason, Nintendo implemented the official chronological ordering of each Zelda game's events with the Hyrule Historia. It was meant to be the canonical timeline for the series, confirmed by Nintendo themselves. But even then, many aspects of the timeline didn't make complete sense. It seemed that Nintendo's main method of progressing the series' storyline was to loosely connect them to one another. Unless it was a direct sequel, of course, like Majora's Mask to Ocarina of Time, or Tears of the Kingdom to Breath of the Wild. So with Breath of the Wild and now Tears of the Kingdom distancing themselves from the rest of the series, Nintendo is able to restructure a more coherent timeline, one that places the initial Zelda games as a forgotten past, making all Zelda games before Breath of the Wild become a mere legend, a folktale, a myth of a reminiscent time dating as far back as tens of thousands of years, with no valid recourse to connect those Zelda titles together with the current. Because of this, Nintendo was able to create a reimagined history for the land of Hyrule, a novel new origin tale, dismissing Link's adventures from the past. So it is quite apparent that Nintendo decided to reimagine the series in its entirety giving a new importance to the Sheikah, and introducing the Zonai tribe, making their presence play a crucial part in Hyrule's complex history. Breath of the Wild focused primarily on the threat of the Great Calamity as its origin story, revisiting Hyrule's never-ending threat of Ganondorf's terroristic reign over its land. And although this is a reboot to the series, as it seems to be the case with Nintendo, this new history is also inundated with unanswered questions, already lacking on many answers in a game that is supposedly a fresh start to the series. Though with Tears of the Kingdom, Nintendo decided to remedy its lack of narrative with an account of Ganondorf that predates the Great Calamity, creating entirely new lore for Hyrule Kingdom. Tears of the Kingdom introduces this new take of Hyrule's first king and queen, their lives, and their relative relationship with the demon king Ganondorf, explaining a new origin story for Ganondorf. But, no matter how many times Nintendo tries to reinvent the past or disassemble its history, there will always be loose ends and unexplained lore. 
Let's be real, we know Nintendo has never really taken the story as seriously as their fans have. With Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, Nintendo has only doubled down on this absence of lore, while also not putting much focus on the story, if at all. Instead, the story is now told through memories that the player can choose to collect throughout the game, leaving the main focus revolving around the gameplay and exploration. And this is something that I've slowly come to accept as a part of the Zelda franchise. Unlike other games that may try to over-explain everything within their universe, Nintendo has a tendency to leave things up to every individual's own interpretation. In this manner, fans may wonder and theorize their own conclusions, rather than explaining the story in a definitive way. Zelda has become no different than Mario or Nintendo's many other IPs. Which is why we never question why Mario is always saving Princess Peach from Bowser. It's just a standard plot device that sets up a new adventure for Mario to undertake. And this same concept applies to the Legend of Zelda series. At its heart, it's always about a hero named Link and his never-ending endeavors to save Princess Zelda and Hyrule from the villainous Ganondorf or other corrupt entities and everything else in between is really left to one's own interpretation. And that is the core of The Legend of Zelda games, a new rendition of a courageous hero who explores a fantastical land and overcomes its many perilous challenges in order to save it from its always impending destruction. And with this in mind, we don't really need a further explanation for why and how history repeats itself. Each game should be contained in its own universe with its own unique legend. And this is why I imagine Nintendo wanted to throw out the Hyrule Historia and begin anew. As the old formula had placed the series in a box that was difficult to alter. In dismissing Zelda's previous lore, let Nintendo re-envision Hyrule with retellings of the same story with different twists. At the end of the day, Nintendo's main focus in creating a great game is its gameplay. While I do wish for Nintendo to put more focus on a deeper, richer story, leaving things up to personal interpretation gives room for the player to create their own theories regarding certain mysteries in the game. And for me, that has always been one of the many charms of The Legend of Zelda. But what do you guys think of Zelda's new take on things? Do you prefer this new direction or yearn for the series of old? While I'm sure many fans, including myself, will still theorize and speculate about the many enigmas the series holds, I don't think Nintendo really gives much thought to those concepts. But again, that's the beauty in making room for individual speculation. It gives us the room to see things how we want to, rather than an absolute way. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, please leave a like on the video to show your support. Also make sure to check out my other social media linked in the description and join my discord server The Night Academy to chat with me and get other info regarding the channel. As always though, I've been ZM, and I'll see you all in the next one.